good morning in the last video we were discussing about the types of vectors we have seen that basically the vectors are classified into two classes the first one is the polar vectors uh, uh, the vectors which are found to be directed towards a certain specific direction which is the direction of the physical quantity that we are considering such vectors are called as polar vectors the examples of the polar vectors are displacement vector velocity vector force vector or we also can consider the position vector of a particle performing say maybe rotational motion or curved motion whatever it is with respect to a certain specific origin so such vectors which are found to be directed towards a specific direction are called as polar vectors and the second type of vectors are the axial vectors the vector quantities that are associated with the rotational motion are called as axial vectors because when we take into consideration the rotational motion of a particle suppose we have a particle performing rotational motion around the circumference of the circle then the angular displacement of the particle is directed in this direction so if we are interested to know what is the angular velocity of the particle or what is the angular acceleration of a particle or if we want to know what is the torque acting on a certain object then such quantities are found to be directed along the axis of rotation of that body or of that particle and hence such uh, vectors which are found to be directed along the axis of rotation are called as axial vectors so uh, these are the main two types of vectors again uh, based on the magnitude of a given vector and what is its direction the vectors are also classified into various types so let us see uh, what are the other type of vectors or the names of the vectors based on their magnitude and direction based on magnitude and direction the vectors are classified into various classes the first type is the unit vector the name of this vector itself indicate what is this vector unit vector is a vector having unit magnitude in the direction of the given vector suppose we have a vector a bar like this then if we draw a vector starting from the origin of this vector a bar having the unit magnitude in the direction of given vector itself such a vector having unit magnitude and the same direction as that of the given vector is called as a unit vector uh, as you know well that uh, the unit vectors associated with the rectangular coordinate system like this if we have this rectangular coordinate system the x axis y axis and z axis this is the origin the unit vector directed along the positive direction of x axis is denoted by i cap the unit vector directed along the positive axis the positive direction of y axis is denoted by j cap and the unit vector directed in the positive direction of z axis is denoted by Uh, i j k k cap so these are i cap j cap and k cap are the unit vectors in the positive directions of 
x axis y axis and z axis respectively so the, these are the uh, unit vectors associated with the rectangular coordinate system uh, this unit vector a cap uh, this unit vectors are usually represented by the symbol cap over that symbol here the given vector is represented by a bar over its head whereas the unit vector is represented by cap over its head which specifies that this is the unit vector the unit vector a cap is expressed as the ratio of the given vector a bar to its magnitude the unit vector a cap is expressed as the ratio of the given vector a bar to its magnitude or simply it can be expressed as a bar upon e where a is the magnitude of the given vector a a bar so uh, the ratio of the given vector to its magnitude gives the unit vector in the direction of the given vector a bar so this vector a cap represents the unit vector uh, similarly you know, this vector a bar uh, we can express in terms of the unit vector and its magnitude like this the given vector a bar in terms of the unit vector a cap in its direction multiplied by the magnitude of that vector gives the given vector a bar so a vector a bar is expressed as a into a cap where a cap is the unit vector in the direction of the given vector a bar and a is the magnitude of the given vector a bar so that is uh, about this uh, unit vector uh, then the second type is the null vector null vector the name of this vector itself indicates what it is a null vector is a vector having zero magnitude and no direction a vector having zero magnitude and no direction is called as a null vector such that if the initial point and the final point coincide with each other if the starting point of a vector and the end point of a vector suppose we have a vector a bar so this is the starting point of the vector a bar and this is the final position of the point vector a bar then uh, this vector a bar has this much magnitude the length of this vector represents the magnitude and this arrowhead represents the direction so the initial point and the final point of this vector if are met to coincide with each other then the magnitude of this vector will be equal to zero as well as it has no direction so such a vector having zero magnitude and no direction is called as a null vector now the question comes if this vector has no magnitude and no direction why to define such vector or in which situations such vector does arise so though this kind of vector has zero magnitude and no specific direction still then and on many a number of occasions while studying the physics we come across the situation where we need to use this concept of null vector or zero vector uh, the examples of this uh, null vector or zero vector are like this suppose we have this rectangular coordinate system say x axis and y axis the origin we have a point p in this xy plane we have a point p in this xy plane so if we draw a line joining from the origin to the position of this point 
this vector op bar represents the position vector this vector op bar represents the position vector of this point p in this x y plane now if we consider that this point p coincides with the origin itself if the point p coincides with the origin itself such that if we have a particle p situated at the origin itself what will be the position vector of that particle so the position vector of a particle situated at the origin will have a position vector whose magnitude will be equal to zero and it will have no direction so this is the first example of a zero vector or a null vector so uh, this vector will have zero magnitude and no specific direction so this is the first example of null vector or a zero vector the position vector of a particle situated at the origin the second example of the null vector or zero vector is the displacement vector of a particle uh, which is at rest suppose we have a particle in this uh, x y plane situated at this point a and this particle is at rest if this particle is at rest can it be possible for us to represent it displacement vector in case if this particle would have displaced from the position a to the position b then we could have represented its displacement vector ab bar during a certain time interval but if this particle a is at rest itself at position a then the displacement vector of such a stationary particle will have zero magnitude will have zero magnitude and it will have no direction because we uh, this particle is not at all displacing either in this direction or this direction or this direction or this direction no way so this vector uh, displacement vector of a stationary particle is another example of the zero vector or null vector and the third example of zero vector or null vector is the acceleration of a particle performing uniform motion as we know that the acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity of the particle if we have a particle moving from the position a to b to say c and if the time intervals required to displace from a to b b to c are measured then we can calculate the velocity of the particle at different instances from 0 to t2 so uh, we can uh, if we know how the velocity of the particle is changing from point to point then we can calculate the acceleration of that particle we can calculate the acceleration of the particle by taking the rate of change of velocity with respect to time but if this particle is moving with the constant speed constant velocity rather you can say then what will be the acceleration of the particle if the distance ab is same as the distance bc if the distance ab is same as bc the time required to travel from a to b is t and again the time required to travel from b to c is same t then the velocity during the displacement from a to b will be same and that from b to c again will be same so if this particle is moving with the uniform speed uniform velocity then the acceleration of this particle will be equal to zero and this acceleration vector of a particle moving with the constant speed or constant velocity will have zero magnitude and no direction so this is another example of zero vector 
or a null vector. So these are certain examples of zero vector or null vector. This zero vector or null vector also possesses some specific properties also. The first property possessed by this zero vector or null vector is that if this null vector or zero vector is added to a given vector a bar then it results into the same vector a bar. So addition of a zero vector to any vector does not make any change in the given vector a bar. And the second property of the zero vector or null vector is that if this given vector a bar is multiplied by a zero vector it results into a zero vector it results into a zero vector so uh, these are the two uh, specific properties of this null vector or zero vector so the addition of zero vector to the given vector does not alter the given vector whereas uh, the multiplication of uh, uh, by the zero vector to the given vector results into a zero vector so these are the two specific properties possessed by this null vector or zero vector so that is uh, about this uh, null vector or zero vector then the third type is equal vectors when we will say the two given vectors are equal the two given vectors are said to be equal if and only if their magnitudes are same as well as their directions are also same suppose we have this vector a bar and this vector b bar if the magnitude of vector a bar is same as that of b bar and the directions of both these vectors if are directed in the same direction then such two vectors are said to be equal vectors and we can represent them as a bar is equal to b bar we can represent them as a bar equal to b bar it may so happen that these equal vectors are parallel to each other or it may so happen that the two vectors coincide with each other the two vectors may coincide with each other or if the two vectors are collinear then the two vectors or uh, not necessarily if this is the vector a bar and the another vector b bar is represented like this again the two vectors can be said to be equal vectors because their magnitudes are same as well as their directions are also same so such two vectors which are having equal magnitudes and same direction are called as equal vectors so that is the equal vectors uh, next is the negative vectors these negative vectors if we have the two vectors which are having same magnitude but the directions of the two vectors are exactly opposite to each other if we have the two vectors having same magnitudes but opposite directions such vectors are called as negative vectors and we can represent them as a bar is is equal to minus b bar or b bar is equal to minus uh, so next step is the negative vectors if we have the two given vectors a bar and b bar 
which are having exactly equal magnitudes but their directions are opposite to each other such two vectors are said to be negative vectors of each other and mathematically we can represent them as a bar equal to minus b bar or b bar is equal to minus a bar so uh, such two vectors which are having uh, uh, exactly equal magnitudes but opposite directions are called as negative vectors so that is the next type of vectors uh, next is the position, uh, position vector position vector If we have this uh, rectangle coordinate system, the origin x axis, y axis, and if we have a particle P situated in this xy plane at point P, then uh, if this particle is at rest, then the particle will be present at P uh, uh, indefinitely. But if this particle is moving, in this xy plane, maybe along a straight line path or maybe along a curved path or maybe along uh, a circumference of the circle in this xy plane, then uh, as the particle displaces from its position, then we can represent the position of this particle with reference to a certain fixed origin, with reference to a fixed origin, then uh, if we draw a vector starting from the origin, the reference point to the position of the particle and such a vector is called as the position vector of that particle. So uh, if this particle is performing the circular motion along the circumference of this circle, at different instances the position vector will rotate like this. So, depending on what is the position of the particle, the position vector of the particle will have the different directions. The magnitudes of all these position vectors will be equal. And if this particle is displacing say along the straight line or along the curved path like this, then uh, we can represent the position vector of the particle like this. So, as the position of the particle changes, the uh, vector that, uh, drawn from the origin to the position of the particle at the given instant represents the position vector of that particle. So that is the concept of the position vector. Next is the concurrent vectors. concurrent vectors. If we have the two vectors, suppose the point O, one vector is directed say like this and the other vector is directed like this. We have these two vectors A bar and B bar such that the starting point or the origin of both the vectors coincide with each other. The starting point of the two vectors, if coincide with each other, such two vectors are said to be concurrent vectors. Such two vectors are said to be concurrent vectors. Uh, then we have the like vectors or co-directional vectors. like vectors or co-directional vectors. Uh, what is this like vector or co-directional vectors? Let us see. So if we have the two vectors, this is say vector E bar 
and other is vector b these two vectors a bar and b bar are having different magnitudes but their directions are one and the same both the direction uh, both the vectors are directed in the same direction but their magnitudes if are different such two vectors are said to be the like vectors or co-directional vectors if the magnitudes of these two vectors are exactly equal then we have seen that such two vectors are called as equal vectors because here the directions of both the vectors are seen as well as their magnitudes are also equal so such two vectors are said to be equal vectors and if the directions of the two vectors are same but their magnitudes are different such two vectors are said to be like vectors or co-directional vectors so that is the co-directional vectors or like vectors next is unlike vectors The name of this vector itself indicate what these vectors are. See, if we have this vector a bar and the vector b. Here, the two vectors are having opposite directions as well as their magnitudes are also different. So, such two vectors having opposite directions and different magnitudes are called as unlike vectors earlier we have seen that if we have the two vectors having exactly opposite directions but their magnitudes if are same are called as negative vectors they are called as negative vectors but if the directions of the two vectors are opposite to each other and in addition to that if their magnitudes are also different then such two vectors are said to be unlike vectors so that is the concept of unlike vectors then uh, next is coplanar vectors Uh, <clears throat> suppose we have the different planes so this is one plane this is another plane this is third plane say so these are the three different planes and in these three different planes we have the three vectors suppose this is vector e bar this is vector b bar and this is the vector c bar so if we have the three vectors a bar b bar and c bar in the three different planes such that all these three planes if are parallel to each other if all these three planes are parallel to each other then all these three vectors which are lying in the parallel planes are called as coplanar vectors or if we can if we represent these three vectors in the same plane such that uh, since the three planes are parallel to each other these three planes can be made to coincide with each other such that all these three vectors can be made to lie in the same plane if the three vectors are made to lie in the same plane 
such factors which lie in the parallel planes or which can be made to lie in the same plane are called as coplanar vectors. So that is the idea about coplanar vectors. Then the non-coplanar vectors. non coplanar vectors if we have the three vectors in the three different planes suppose this is one plane this is uh, another plane and this is the third plane and if we have the three vectors lying in these three different planes this is say vector v bar this is say vector C bar. So that in this case, if the planes of these three vectors are different, can it be possible for us to make the three vectors to lie in the same plane? It is not possible. So such vectors which do not lie in the same plane or which cannot be made to lie in the same plane are called as non-coplanar vectors. The vectors which are not lying in the same plane or which cannot be made to lie in the same plane are called as non-coplanar vectors. So that is uh, another type of the vectors. Next is the reciprocal vector. The name of this vector itself indicates what the given vector is. If we have a vector a bar, if we have a vector a bar, then the reciprocal vector is expressed as a bar inverse. a bar inverse represent the reciprocal vector of the given vector a bar. If it is so, then what will be the relationship between the given vector a bar and the reciprocal vector? It is obvious. The relationship between the two vectors will be 1 upon a bar. a bar, uh, a bar inverse will be equal to 1 upon a bar. That is the reciprocal vector. So, uh, this is how we can express the reciprocal vector. So, if we have a vector A bar, then its reciprocal vector A bar inverse is expressed as 1 upon A bar. Or this is nothing but equal to, uh, this can be expressed as 1 upon mod A bar into A cap where a cap is the unit vector in the direction of the vector a bar and the magnitude of this reciprocal vector is found to be equal to the reciprocal of the magnitude of the given vector. So, uh, the reciprocal vector is a vector having the same direction as that of the given vector a bar but the magnitude of the reciprocal vector is found to be equal to the reciprocal of the magnitude of the given vector a bar. So, this is how we express the reciprocal vector of a given vector a bar. Now, <coughs> uh, if we consider the unit vectors i cap, j cap, k cap, as we know that i cap, j cap and k cap are the unit vectors in the 
positive directions of x, y, and z axis. So, can it be possible for us to obtain the reciprocal vector of these unit vectors? Let us see. Say, we want to obtain i cap inverse. So, this can be expressed as 1 upon modulus of i cap into i cap. 1 upon modulus of i cap into i cap. Again, uh, we have seen that this uh, unit vector is expressed as the ratio of the given vector to its magnitude. So, this is equal to a bar upon a square. So, similarly, this unit vector i cap here can be expressed as 1 upon mod i cap into i cap upon mod i cap. Since i cap is a unit vector in the positive direction of x axis, its magnitude is 1. So, the magnitude of this unit vector i cap, j cap or k cap is 1. So, we can replace this magnitude by 1. So, this is equal to i cap. So, what we observe here is that the reciprocal vector of this unit vector is the given vector itself. So, uh, we can say that the unit vectors are self-reciprocal vectors. The unit vectors i, j, k are the self-reciprocal vectors. Right? So, that is about this reciprocal vectors. Then, uh, the last type of vectors is the gradient vector. So, let us see what is this gradient vector. Gradient vector. Uh, <coughs> we have a certain scalar field, if we have a certain scalar field, what is scalar field that we are going to study in the next chapter, but for the time being, uh, you just uh, remember that uh, what you have studied in case of the electric field. So, if we have a certain charge plus Q placed at a certain point in the space, then this charge Q produces a certain electric field in its surrounding region. That is what you have studied. This charge Q produces an electric field in its surrounding region. So, uh, this electric field can be, uh, the strength of this electric field produced by a given charge can be expressed in different forms. In vector form, it can be represented with the help of electric intensity. In the scalar form, it can be represented with the help of electric potential at a point in the given field due to the given charge Q. So, uh, as we know that electric intensity is a vector quantity and electric potential is a scalar quantity. So, if we measure the electric potential at different points in this electric field. See, P is the electric potential at a certain point in the given electric field. Then, uh, this electric potential is not constant at every point in this electric field, but it changes as the distance of the point from the given charge is changed. So, the rate of change of this electric potential with respect to the distance of the point from the given charge, the negative space rate of change of the electric potential with respect to the distance gives a vector quantity and such a vector quantity is called as electric intensity. Such a vector quantity is called as electric intensity. So, uh, such 
vector e bar here since is expressed as the rate of change of electric potential rate of change of electric potential the negative rate of change of electric potential so uh, such kind of factors which are defined or which are derived as the uh, rate of change of a scalar quantity or scalar field is called as a gradient vector such vectors are called as gradient vectors so this concept of uh, gradient vectors we are going to discuss in the next part